Hey, hey, I'm Mike Russell with this week's new and trending AI tools to take your content creation to brand new levels. What I love about the AI space is the rate of progress. No sooner has something been announced like Vassal One from Microsoft. If you missed that announcement, take a look at this. And it's also just strange to both be extremely worried about different things and have your anxiety levels like peak. And have a little peek at this. The first thing we need to look at is the letter H. So the sound at the beginning. Those are completely synthetic avatars with emotions, facial expressions and more. And they look incredible. Now, Microsoft has not released this technology, but the best thing about AI is it moves so fast another company has. Let's take a look at Synthesia, who just yesterday announced that they're introducing the world's first expressive AI avatars in 130 plus languages, and it's as easy as making a slide deck. Let's look at a few examples, starting with emotions and expressive facial features. I am very happy. I am so upset. And then a couple of my favorite avatars, including Talia. I'm looking forward to helping you create videos. And here's Joshua. Hey, I'm Joshua, one of Synthesia stock AI avatars. I've got to say, Joshua did look a little bit AI generated, but these avatars are only going to get better with time. Now think about how you could use them in your content creation. For example, telling a story, introducing a video, or even maybe completing a whole tutorial for you. Let's go and try the free demo ourselves and see what's possible. So here inside their free AI video generator, it's as simple as first selecting a template. So Synthesia Demo gives you Alex, you've got Francesca available, and also Jazz. Uh, so depending on what you're looking for, let's go with Jazz and the compliment template, that sounds good. Now you need to edit the video script, so I'm just gonna clear this out and put my own script in here about Creator Magic, and then I'll click Generate Free AI Video. Okay, and let's take a look at what's come back. I love Creator Magic with Mike Russell. Although his positivity about AI sometimes angers me, saying that I'm surprised I'm not subscribed. You should subscribe to Creator Magic. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, I definitely saw facial expressions and emotions there. I would have expected more anger when he was saying how angry he is about my positivity around AI. Now, I think we're going to see AI avatars used more and more in creations from entertainment to healthcare. Just take a look at this example. Hi, James. I'm Paloma. I'm here to help with your medication and share some comforting tips. It's normal to feel overwhelmed and anxious, but... I promise you'll start feeling better soon. Paloma there, an example avatar from Synthesia who really shows emotion and empathy there. If you like what you see so far, remember to throw a like on this video and also subscribe so you never miss another AI Tools weekly update from me. Next up, it's Adobe. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get comments saying, Mike, you're an Adobe shill. It's not that, it's just simply that Adobe are moving so fast, they seem to have an AI announcement every week at the moment. Whether it's the generative extend for video or updates to their Firefly model, Image 3 model is now available. And let's take a look at it. So Firefly Image 3 model is available in the browser. I'll post the link down below. It's a free tool to use, but obviously you get more credits if you have a paid account. Now take a look at this image of a woman with a vector logo of an idea. It looks pretty incredible. I remember when the first Firefly model came out and it was pretty clunky, but now we're getting such realistic generations. It's incredible. So I'm going to try the web-based version and update the prompt. A wizard with a microphone vector icon logo. So trying to keep the same kind of idea. Let's see what comes back. Now I find it really interesting. It's thrown me four female wizards back in the generation and not a single male there. Is that continued wokeness sitting inside AI models from Adobe and Google? Uh, let's try one more time time and see if we get a male wizard. And I got to say, these generations are the creepiest I've seen yet. However, if I zoom in on this one, you've got to agree that the person in the image looks really realistic. Let's just update my prompt and add the word male and generate again to see if this works. And this is a very interesting result. We seem to have wizards of all different ethnicities and a wizard with the microphone merging into their moustache there. You may remember that Google faced a little bit of controversy a while back when it generated founding fathers of color and also German war soldiers of different ethnicities. That aside, my job is to focus on how content creators can use these tools. And I want to hop into Photoshop Beta where you can really see the power of Firefly Image 3 model in action. Let's do it. Okay, this is the beta version 
version of Photoshop and you can access it inside your Creative Cloud app by clicking the beaker icon and downloading the Photoshop beta. Let's get started. And Next Generation AI is here, giving me the ability to generate a completely new image from scratch. So for the prompt, I'll say an old male wizard in an Art Deco hall holding a magic orb. Content type, I can choose, I'm going to choose photo here. Reference image, you can upload or choose a reference image if you like any styles. And you can also choose different effects. I quite like the idea of the bokeh effect. So let's go for that and click generate. This has given me some pretty crazy suggestions, particularly the second suggestion. I'm not sure if that's a wizard or a dog, but it sure is fun to play with. Okay, let's tweak things up a bit and see if we can get anything better. This time I'm going to choose a reference image, this lovely blue swirl, and I'll also change the style from photo to art and see if we get something better. And this is looking much more like it. I really like the images that are coming back from here in artistic style. Definitely some interesting generations coming back here. Perhaps Adobe Firefly Image 3 model doesn't really like wizards. Let's try something completely different. I've typed in a magical cave with crystals and a fairy flying around. I'm going to change the reference image up. I'm going to keep everything pretty much the same, although maybe we'll go for digital art and no bokeh effect this time and generate again. Okay, definitely some interesting generations coming back following my reference image. These are pretty usable. Now, what I did get to wondering when I used reference image is could I use this to do a face swap, for example, in Photoshop? So let's give it a go. This is actually something I've generated in Mid Journey. If you've seen my video on creating amazing thumbnails for YouTube, you should definitely go and watch that if you haven't seen it. Uh, I use Mid Journey to generate most of my thumbnails, but you'll see that's definitely not me in the image. Now, what I can do is maybe grab the lasso tool and just kind of lasso here around the face as much as I can just to get only the face and nothing more and see if Adobe will allow me to do this. So I'll do generative fill here and here I'm going to pop open reference image right now and I'm going to upload an image. Okay and now I've got me as a reference image. Let's click generate and see how well this works. Wow. Okay, I don't think I look like any of these generations, unfortunately. So I'm going to rate this as poor and say I wouldn't use it for my project. Uh, I disagree with this. The result looks believable, strongly disagree, and it blends well, uh, disagree. Let's submit that feedback uh, so Adobe can improve. And let's give the dice one more roll and see whether it's any better on the second go. No, this is just not quite ready for prime time. Face swapping is not something that the Firefly model can do just yet. Now, the best thing about all these AI image generations is they're non-destructive, meaning I can click the eyeball to disable this layer and I'm back to my original image. Okay, let's try another feature and this is the adjustment brush available under the brush tool here. I'll select it and then I can use the curly brackets to make it bigger or smaller and I can choose what I'd like to do. So if I want to increase exposure, say on the face, I can paint over like that and look at how much brighter and more vibrant only the face looks. Maybe I want to increase exposure on the scroll. I can also do that very quickly and the hand holding it as well. Continuing onwards, we could select black and white and we could make the brush even bigger and just say that we want the whole back background of the image to be black and white and there easily I can paint around my image and make sure that the character stays in color but the background is more black and white. Notice how it feathers and merges in there nicely. I can also click vibrance and maybe make it a bit smaller so that we can really make this fire nice and vibrant and yellow here over on the right hand side. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and select Posterize here and change the style of just the character in the image to be a cartoon character by simply brushing over only the character and not the background. And within moments, we've got a completely different image using the new adjustment brush in Photoshop Beta. Again, something I love about Adobe Firefly is the ability to select part of an image and suggest something completely new. Here you can see I've got a rainbow laser poking out of my torch here. Now, if I like a particular style like this one, I can actually click the three dots on the generation and choose Generate Similar, which is a brand new feature too. And now you'll see it's used the initial generation to give me three very similar variations to use in my image. Another really cool AI feature in Adobe Photoshop Beta is the ability to generate new backgrounds. Well, first of all, I can remove the background with a click. And now you'll see I get two new options, import a background from an image I already have or generate a background. So let's do that. 
And here we can see AI has put me on the surface of Mars in these different images. Pretty cool, right? Let's try in the Amazon rainforest. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. Now, maybe I want to go back to that adjustment brush, choose exposure, and just pop myself out ever so slightly so I'm nice and bright with the background there looking good. The final tool I'll show you in this week's roundup is Exemplary AI. Now, it's an AI short clip generator. And before you say, Mike, not another short clip generator, we've already seen loads. This one, I think, is really interesting because it can also add really interesting B-roll. Here I am on the free plan. I'm just going to upload a file of last week's AI tools roundup. As expected, it's transcribed me perfectly. Here are this week's new and trending AI tools. And what I'm interested to use here is the new feature inside Exemplary AI called AI Clips. Now, while we're waiting for those AI clips to generate, another cool feature of Exemplary AI is auto-generation summary here. So we've got a nice summary. We've got title suggestions for this clip. We've also got chapters. Now, if I had more content, this was just a small sample, it would give me lots of chapters. It's also generated tweets for the X platform and a blog post along with a Q&A as well. So I can get so much multi-purposing of my content just from one tool, which is pretty incredible. Okay, so like many other tools, it's generated me a short clip, but here in the editor, we've got a bunch of different things that we can do. We can add a waveform as well if we want to make this look really good. So let's choose from one of the funky designs. Let's play that. Here are this week's new, and if I don't quite like that, maybe I like a style that looks like this. I can reposition that however I'd like on the clip. Here are this week's new and trending AI tools. Now the feature I gotta say I'm most excited about is the ability to auto-generate B-roll using AI. So if I go into the transcript over here, I can now go ahead and add a number of different AI-powered features. Let's try auto B-roll. Let's look at a couple of generations. And a new open source AI that could be better than ChatGPT4 and Claude Opus 3. Okay, not too bad at all. It's thrown in a few static clips there, but pretty good for auto-generated B-roll. Now, of course, Shorts generation is very competitive in the AI space for content creators. And I've done videos on Choppity and also Opus Clip. You should definitely go and watch and find out more on the other tools available. But I think exemplary AI is setting itself apart with that automated B-roll, which I'm sure will get better with time as well, and other superpowers such as summarization, chapters, titles, Q&As, and more. So there you go. Those are the AI tools I have for you this week. I like to focus on practical stuff you can use in your content creation journey right now. But I'd like to give a little shout out to a video I saw with Rene, the creator liaison here at YouTube, interviewing the chief product officer of YouTube, Joanna, and asking about some various features that are either here or coming soon for podcasters. I feel really excited about the possibility to put your podcast up on YouTube. I think it's a great opportunity. And a couple of things that really caught my ear in this interview was when Rene asked Joanna about an AI visualizer for podcasts that are audio only. Watch this. Is there any thought to maybe using AI to generate some sort of visualization or better viewing experience to go with all that back catalog content? That is definitely... Definitely an interesting idea that we will take into account. Hmm. So there we go. Maybe that's a feature we'll see soon that will really help audio-only podcasts. I also noticed how there was a big emphasis on uploading your back catalogue to YouTube for future discovery. Being the world's second largest search engine, YouTube's a pretty good place to get discovered. Watch this. There's so many things on YouTube that were created in the past and you can listen to now. So I think this is really going to be powerful for both our viewers and podcasters who want to upload um, content that they've made in the past. So there you go. I'm pretty excited about the future of podcasting on YouTube. I intend to start a podcast for Creator Magic soon, and I think YouTube will be a huge part of my podcasting plan. What about you? Will you be uploading your back catalogue of podcasts? Or indeed, are you already podcasting on YouTube? Let me know your experience in the comments down below. And if you never want to miss another AI Tools update, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. The link is down below. And watch the playlist. The playlist is on your screen right now. I update this playlist weekly with all the AI news and tools that I find for your own content creation. Enjoy.